Hey guys, in this video I'll be covering the making of SentryBot's main armor panel. We're going to be processing the model, cleaning it up, sanding, painting, applying some grunge, applying some edge wear to get to the final product. It's a pretty time consuming process, so I've time lapsed the videos. I hope you guys enjoy. I've already removed the support materials for the print and done a little bit of cleanup. I apply putty to get rid of build lines and imperfections from errors in the printmaking process. Take your time with this step. You definitely don't want to fill in those nice details with putty. Next we start sanding away to create a consistent surface. This is very time consuming, but it's worth it. We do want to clean up the model, but in something rugged like the Sentry Bot, having some imperfections is not necessarily a bad thing. Here I mix in a resin called XSC 3 d with iron powder. Because it's real metal, you can actually manipulate it so that it will rust and create oxidation in a realistic way. As a nice little bonus, it also reacts magnetically. Once applied, this resin creeps into gaps and build lines to effectively cover those up. As a result, this resin can accidentally creep into details you may actually want to keep and erase them. So I suggest leaving the detailed areas for last. Cover your big areas first, Move to the detailed areas when the resin has hardened a little bit and creeps a little bit less. Here I added the rust activator. Once the resin is cured, you can pass steel wool over the surface to expose the metal. You can leave the model dusty. This allows for more rust to form in areas. You can also go ahead and add iron powder directly to crevices if you want by rubbing it in before you start spraying the rust activator. You can then go ahead and coat the surface with the rust activator. Typically, I do two passes. My first one, cover everything. Then the second one, five minutes later, again, cover everything. Make sure to saturate the corners where you really want rust to develop. After that, I let it sit overnight to completely dry. Once dry, remove excess rust with steel wool. When painting your first pass, stick to the large surfaces. Avoid the details and try to give a wide margin to the rust. Once the large areas are covered, you can start going in with less paint into the details. You can also start moving into the rust with a semi-dry brush and you dab closer and closer into the rust until you get the effect of paint peeling off around the rusted areas. Once the first painting pass is complete, look at your model carefully to make sure there are no areas that need more paint. When the paint job is complete, we apply a wash to the whole model for the initial grunge effect. Apply the wash liberally to the whole model. Once you're done applying the wash, use a moist paper towel to wipe away the large surface areas. Be careful not to wipe away too much of the wash near the detailed areas or the crevices. I then apply a slightly darker wash directly into the crevices. And again, use a moist paper towel to wipe the excess wash off. Once the wash effect is dry, I go in with a steel wool and remove some of that dirt effect from the actual paint. You're just trying to remove some of the wash from the green paint without actually removing the green paint. If you find that some of your dust has darkened due to the wash, go in with the steel wool and lightly remove a little bit of the wash off, exposing the rust again. Use the steel wool to remove some of the wash and the green paint from the edges of your model. This will give it an edge-worn look that will bring out the metal of the model. I welcome any feedback on this process, as well as any feedback on making of presentation or content in these videos. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe for more videos on the Making of SentryBot, as well as videos on upcoming projects.